Finally, the Christians are angry. I don't know why it's taking you so long. Even as a Muslim, even as somebody who's recently reverted, it gives me genuine happiness to see the Christians finally angry about something. You have gay preachers, LGBT drag story hours at your fucking churches. You sit around and turn the other cheek. You have no cheeks left to turn. There's nothing in this world without masculine rage. It's the bottom line of everything. There's no... Hey, man, there's a lot of stuff going on with Diddy now. I don't look. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Now listen, I'm being I'm being childish right now. I know what type of cheeks he's talking about. He ain't talking about the other cheeks, y'all. He's talking about these cheeks. That, that's the cheeks that he's talking about. I'm just being childish. I'm sorry. Around and turn the other cheek. You have no cheeks left to turn. There's nothing in this world without masculine rage. It's the bottom line of everything. There's no country without men who are prepared to get angry and defend it. There's no idea. There's no house. There's no religion without masculine rage. They've bred it out of you. And for the first time in a long time, we see Christians finally angry about something. The reason your religion is failing is because this whole bullshit of tolerance and sitting around turning the other cheek is making you globally mocked. You're seen as weak. And when I see Christians mad for the first time in a long time, although I'm no longer Christian, it makes me feel happy. This is exactly what the world needs. There has to be a line where you say, no, we will not accept. That's how we ended up in this position in the first place. Accepting everything. It's not tolerant. It doesn't make you a good person to let someone else fuck your wife. Do you understand? It makes you a cuck. And it gets to a point where you finally have had enough. This piece of shit, which tried to stab the preacher, I don't care if I was defending a nation state and I was a sniper and I had the opponent nation state's holy man in my sights. I would not pull the trigger in the middle of a sermon. There's no excuse for that. This person deserves the harshest possible justice. And guess where he's not going to get it? He's not going to get it in some bullshit Australian prison. He's going to get a lawyer. The lawyer's going to talk about his human rights and his mental health. He'll be back on the street soon. While he's in jail, he'll be living better than most people around the world even live. In Muslim and Christian nations. This piece of shit deserves an eye for a fucking eye. Isn't that what the Bible says? And for the first time ever, Christians are standing up. If Christians stood up, the Western world wouldn't be failing in real time. I say this as a Muslim. All of the problems of the Western world is down to an absolute lack of faith and conviction within the Christians. That's how they get away with all of this garbage. This is not about Muslims versus Christians. That's not what this is about. This is what they want. We need more God, not less God. We need more men who are prepared to stand on God and fight for God. It is the atheists. It's the people who believe in nothing. They're the ones who are pushing and purporting the ideas that are destroying your society. They are the people who are trying to destroy your family life and poison your children. I have no problem with Christians. I embrace Christians as my brothers and finally happy to see you standing up for yourselves. I truly pray this piece of shit gets what he deserves. Okay. Okay. First of all, first of all, because Andrew Tate, you said a lot, my brother. You said a lot. And I 100% 100 is crazy. Boy, I need to take some grammar classes. I 100% disagree with you, my brother. I disagree. And I'm going to tell you why I disagree. And a lot of y'all might be watching this and like, yeah, he's right. He's this. We need to stand up. You guys need to stand up. Woo -woo. Yeah, Christian may seem weak, this and that. All right, let me explain to you something. First thing first, we all, we all want to be like a Peter. Okay, we all want to be like a Peter. We all want to slice off someone there. You know what I'm saying? We all want to be angry. We all want to stand up for Jesus. And we can stand up for Jesus, but we have to do it in a loving manner. The goal is to not sit there and kill people, you know, for, for Jesus Christ. Like, granted, I'm pretty sure we all want to do that. But the Bible tells us to, to deny our flesh. So our flesh wants to do things to harm others. It wants to do, like, when you when you talk about someone, God, when you talk about someone's belief system, it want, it want your flesh wants to harm that person. It, it wants to give that person, like, the, the, the like you want to give that person all the wrath that's in you. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to harm that person, do things to that person that you know you should not be doing. But as a Christian, you say, uh, how many cheeks, uh, how many cheeks do we have left to turn? We have unlimited cheeks to turn. You know why I say that is because when Jesus walked, when Jesus walked on this earth, when he was God in the flesh, what Jesus did was he showed love to people. When he died on that cross, bro, spit it on, crucified, beat on, whipped, all type of crazy stuff happened to them. And he he had one of the worst deaths in history, okay? One of the worst deaths in history. When he got on that cross, he said, 
Father, forgive them for they do not know the things that they do. Father, forgive them. That man was beat, whipped, spit on, clothes stripped. Like all these things happened to them. But yet he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know the things that they do. Jesus taught us to love our neighbors, to love our enemies. We are to love our enemies. We are to treat our enemies as if we was to treat a loved one. We are to care for our enemies, pray for our enemies. The world may say that we're weak. And that's why a lot of people don't want to follow Christ because they don't know how to deny their flesh. They don't know how to deny the anger. The, they don't know how to be angry without a let, without allowing anger to cause them to sin. You see what I mean? Because the Bible say, look, it's okay. You can, you, can, you can be angry at something. You can be upset about something. But don't allow anger. Don't allow the sun to go down while you still have anger because anger is a foothold for the devil. You know what I'm saying? When you're angry about something, you want to retaliate. You want to do things that are against God. That's why we are to not allow anger to cause us to sin. We are human, so we're going to be angry about things. We have emotions. We have feelings. We're going to be upset. We're going to be, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have those feelings and emotions, but it's, we're not to use those feelings and emotions to cause us to sin against God. You see what I'm saying? So, you, and if y'all don't know the story he's talking about, it's a preacher who got stabbed by a Muslim, by a Muslim who came up there, stabbed him as he was in the middle of a sermon. OK, and that preacher, what that preacher did was something that Jesus would have done. It's something that Jesus did do. That preacher prayed for him. That preacher said, Father, forgive him. That's what that preacher said. That preacher is Mari Mari and Manu. I think I reacted to one of his videos. It's still on this channel. That preacher right there is that same preacher that forgave him, forgave that person that stabbed him. That man could have lost his life. But yet the preacher, instead of retaliating, instead of doing something that the flesh really wants to do, he walked into the spirit. The Bible tells us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We have to walk in the spirit. But the more you spend time in the flesh, the more you go want to do fleshly things. Fleshly things are anger. You want to go, you want to start to want to retaliate at people that offend you, that uh, people that hurt you, people that uh, betrayed you. But guess what? Jesus got betrayed. It. Jesus got spit on. Jesus got hurt. Jesus got harmed. Did he go after these people and kill them? No. What he did was he showed love. What he did was he forgave them. He wants us to walk in love. We are to look different from the world. The world, they retaliate when people say things that, 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 that offends them. They retaliate in anger. You know what I'm saying? They retaliate in anger, but how can we walk like Jesus, but also want to look like the world too? The world, they want to do things of the flesh. We have to do things as a, of the spirit as a Christian. As a believer in Christ, and you say that the Bible say eye for eye. Yes, the Bible does say eye for eye, two for two. But this is what you did. You took that verse out of context. I actually got to put that right here. You know what I'm saying? So right here on the Sermon on the Mount, right? One of Jesus' most popular sermons, okay? One of the best sermons he ever preached. You have to read Matthew to in order to see the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus Jesus counters the common teaching of a personal retaliation. You have heard that it that it was said, eye for eye and the tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, Jesus then proceeds to reveal God's heart concerning interpersonal relationships. Do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn them the other cheek. This is what he also referred to. Uh, uh, I was going to call him Adam Sandler, whatever your name is. Uh, Mr. Uh, what, what, what is this guy's name? Bro, I just had a brain fart. What is his name? Uh, bro, Andrew Tate. Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Um, if Okay, uh, back to what I was saying. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to uh, borrow from you. So right here in the new in, in, in this uh, in giving this new command, Jesus is not nullifying the Old Testament law. Rather, he is separating the responsibility of the government to to punish evildoers justly from the responsibility we all have on our personal level before God to love our enemies. We should not seek ret uh, retribution for personal slights. We are to ignore personal insults, the meaning of turn the other cheek. 
Christians are to be willing to give more of their material goods, time and labor than required, even if the demands upon us are unjust. Now, I could keep going on and reading and reading and that, but bro, it is so easy to find a context of scripture. Look the context of scriptures up. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go with what you see and say, oh, I for night, I'm going. Like, no, you have to read the content. What, what, what did, what, what was, why is this even here? Why did God say I for an eye and two for a two? Why was this placed in two Old Testament verses? Why, why is this a thing? Like, you have to honestly ask these questions and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal these things to you in your heart. But if you just go with whatever it say, you're just taking things out of context, bro. Anything you read, you want to know the context. When you watch a video, you don't, when you, let's say it like this. When you watch a movie, you don't start from the middle of the movie. No, you start at the beginning because you need to know the context that leads up to the middle of the movie. You see what I'm saying? Hold on now. I know y'all enjoying the video, but I also want to say this. When I say that you don't start from the middle of the book, I think that was like a, a little bit bad of example because when you're reading the Bible, because of the Bible is so holy and because it's like it's just refreshing every time you read it. It's not like a regular book. You'll learn more about that once you get mature in your faith. But when you understand that it's not a regular book, you can't start from anywhere in the Bible and it will hit you no matter what. But what I meant was you don't take a certain verse of scripture and you just use that certain no no you don't you just got to read the context of that certain verse and when i say context read what other verses surround that one verse read the whole chapter so that way you can understand that one verse you don't just take that one verse and run with it you need to know the context of that one scripture and know why is it here why did god place it here what does it mean to us you know what i'm saying like you gotta know these things but anyways man finish enjoying the video you got to know the context. You don't just start from, oh, I'm going to just start here. I'm, and then when when you start here, it may be something else that may tie into it. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, bro, you just don't start in the middle of something. You have to start at the start at the beginning of a movie or anything so you can know the context of things. So you can know the context of things. You know what I'm saying? So to say, to, to, to enter Tate's point, I disagree with everything you said besides the fact you did say that we need more God, but you're a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? The God you're talking about, Allah, no, 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 no. That God is a false God, my brother. But we do need more of Yahweh. We do need more Yeshua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need more of that in America. But again, like I said, being a Christian, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. That's why that's why people don't want to follow Christianity. It ain't easy, bro. This ain't just something that you just say a prayer and you just get saved. No, this is a lifestyle. Yeah, it's many people that say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but they're not really living a lifestyle of a Christian. They're not really living a lifestyle that Jesus wants us to truly live. They're not living a lifestyle that is holy, that is righteous. They just claim it to be a Christian because they was raised in it. They're not actually living this junk out. This junk is not easy, bro. It's a it's a narrow path. It's very narrow, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like this is like a lot of people that claim to be Christian, they're going to find themselves in hell. They think because I claim myself, I claim to be a Christian. I claim to believe in Jesus. I claim. But are you walking? Are you talking? Are you acting? Are you being a representation of Jesus Christ in your everyday to day life? Or are you living the way you want to live? That's the problem, bro. Yeah, you know how many times I do want to get into a fight with somebody? How many times I want to punch somebody? How many times I, I, bro, I have flesh. But again, I can't walk in the flesh. I can't. I can't act upon what my feelings want to do. I have to act upon what the spirit wants to do. What the spirit telling me to do is to love that person, forgive that person. Don't be offended by that person. Because if I forgive them, God will forgive me for my sins. I'm supposed to forgive them because God has forgiven me for my sins. I'm not supposed to not forgive them because the Bible tells us that if we don't forgive one another, God cannot forgive us. We have to show that same grace and mercy God shows us to other folks. What good does it does? The Bible tells us what good is it when you give generously to someone you already love? That, what's good is that? Even the evildoers do that. Like, even evil people give to the people they honestly love. But you giving love to someone that you don't know, that's a, that's right there. That's a good step. That's a big step right there. Because you don't know this person from a can to paint, but you're showing them love. This person done talked down on you. This person done did this. This person done did that. But yet, you still give them love. You still show them love. That's what Jesus did, bro. Jesus didn't walk around like Peter slicing off people's ears. He didn't walk around like Paul killing Christians. But yet, Jesus used both of these men that had anger within them to walk and follow him. Look at what Paul was. 
a person that was killing Christians. Now look at him, apostle of Jesus Christ, walking in, preaching the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, being a prisoner for Jesus, for Jesus Christ. Peter, he was ready to, bro, Peter was, Peter was a dog, bro. He was ready to fight. Like, come on, you talk about Jesus? What, what's up? What's up? I took all y'all. Peter was ready, boy. He was ready. But he knew that he had to walk like Jesus. When he seen that Jesus wasn't retaliating at these people, he wanted to walk and imitate Jesus. That's just the key of it, bro. Anyways, man, uh, yeah, definitely pray for Andrew Tate, bro. Uh, he also made this post right here. Jesus will not return to save a bunch of cowards and cooter mamas. Finally, the, the Christians are angry. Bro, that just scared the mess out of me, bro. That just scared the mess out of me, bro. I don't know if y'all just seen me jump. I was not expecting that, bro. That just scared the living dog mess out of me, bro. Um, Yeah, you saying Jesus will not return to save a bunch of cowards and cooter mamas? All right, Andrew. Um, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, brother. But anyways, man, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Definitely pray for Andrew Tate. If you have a problem with Christianity or anything like that, then hey, man, it is what it is. I just pray that you come to Christ. I pray that you find Jesus. I pray that you find the truth. Seek the truth. Y'all seek the truth in politics. Y'all seek the truth in everything else. Seek the truth in knowing who the real true God is. You know what I'm saying? Seek the truth because the answers are there. You just got to be willing to honestly have an open mind to receiving the truth, the truth and the fullness of God. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, man, y'all have a good one. I love y'all. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.